Hello everyone and welcome to this tournament game coming from the Striolated Mannequin Mayhem Cup. So this is a quarter-final match, best of three, which is going to be between June Pike and Entara Adun. So both very strong players, uh, both fought their way through a couple of knockout matches as well as the group stage that we had before that um, to get this far in the tournament and yeah it's a quarter-final so a place in the semi-finals is well and truly up for grabs for both these players. So just to introduce your commentary team today, so my name is Flan and I'm joined once again by Elsie. So hello Elsie. Hello. And I'm pretty sure the winner of this match goes on to face you in the semi-finals, correct? Well I wasn't gonna mention that, but you're absolutely right. Um, so I will be as impartial as I can and absolutely I'm not here to uh, you know, try and pick up any sort of insights into the players. Um, but yeah, it should be a good match. You know, these are both good players. Um, you know, June's been around for quite a while um, and had a really strong performance in the Premier League recently. Uh, and Tara doing a bit more recent joining to the server, but they've really hit the ground running. Um, you know, they, they're, they're very highly ranked on the Evo system. And yeah, they've, they've done well to get so far in this tournament as well. So um, it should absolutely be a good match. So I'll just let our players know that they are ready to go. Um, I believe the entire Adun has won the coin flip. So as I said, this will be a best of three series. So entire Adun will be going first in game one. Um, and then for game two, we'll have June going first, just to even it out. And then if we do need a game three as a decider, it's based on who um, scores the most points or has the most point difference, I should say, from those first two games. So, um, yeah, best of luck to both players. Um, I will just stick them both on um, Mute and Deafen, I... just in case. Yeah, yeah. we are ready to Do the go. actual stream stuff, because I'm getting distracted by the starting hands. Yeah, that is a very a very distracting starting hand, so... Oh, uh... he and the tray, <laughs> and the common weapon. then. Yes. That is a yeah. that's a perfect grassland start right there. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know they've got at least a wetland bird in their hands, so uh, you know sometimes sometimes you you struggle a bit um, if you do have a raven. Obviously, with the house rules we have in our tournaments, that yeah. can't go down until the start of round two. So you can sometimes find you get up to a bit of a slow start, but yeah, it will be an interesting decision whether they do go for the tower or the snipe because. I think they I think, will I look to the, build that wetlands up. The Raven and the Toei, um, if they go for the full food-based grassland, which mm. is what I would do here because I like that strategy, but I would definitely keep the will in here. And yeah. this is a backup wetland bird because worst case, it gains you like... You've got the potential to gain points and it's only one food. It's flexible food. Or you could keep yeah. the Merganser for the same predator reasons but yeah i quite like i quite like the tauhi option here um you know they they will want to at least have the right food for the raven at the end of this round so you know if they keep raven will it they can afford to keep a, a rodent as that food for the raven and then obviously it eats yeah. too wild so you know if they can get a couple of seeds from their tauhi um that's going to go towards that and they're able to you know lay eggs and score points while doing that so i don't think it's a bad yeah. option but yeah, I think they they will want to build up that wetlands because you know if you if you have all the food in the world from your raven, you you need the card draw to supplement that to at least you know be able to draw those big point birds uh, in order to to get those down. I think the points. good thing about having the raven and the toey here though is it allows you to pretty much completely skip the forest, um, mm. especially once round two starts. So yeah. Um, yeah, Taro's likely going to have to jump up there just for one time to get the birds down, but yeah, I think they're I think pretty certainly, much sad. Yeah, I think Raven on its own, you can you can definitely just rely on that as your, your sole food source from round two onwards, but yeah, if you if you don't have anything down, it does tend to slow down that first round a little bit. You know, if you have to spend a couple of turns getting a single food from the bird feeder... You know, those are turns you could have spent scoring points or drawing more cards, so it can slow you down a little bit. Um, they have kept a seed, which maybe is a little bit of a steer to the fact that they're looking at the Tauhi. Um, 
But yeah, yeah it'll be it'll be interesting to see what they go for. I think they're both so, very well set up in terms of food with the hawk and the cardinal yeah. for June. Like Yeah, it's not a bad starting hand for June either. I think you're yeah. right, you know, the cardinal and the hawk, I think if you get both of those down, that's probably your forest sorted. Um, and then the purple martin is just it's just such a strong card to go for as well. So it would be interesting if um, you know, if Entaro Dune does go for the Tauhi. I think that I think that June's gonna be all over that that snipe because they don't really have much of a wetland bird, but yeah, if you can get the snipe, draw lots of cards and then you can cycle through them with the Martin, I think that's a really strong position to be in early in the game. So would you ever drop the Martin and grab in the uh, wetlands if you're not going full tuck, or is that solely a full tuck play for you? For me I think it's all it's it's almost always stronger in the grasslands. You know, if you are going for some kind of wetland engine then you can make the Martin work in that wetlands because you're going to get more activity from it there. But yeah, I generally prefer to play other birds in the wetlands and just use that, you know, something like the Snipe is kind of the perfect example. Use that to get lots of cards. And then when you've got the Martin down in your, your grasslands, you know, you're, you're going to want to lay eggs anyway, um, particularly with these end of round goals. Um, they're all very egg heavy, but you know, the eggs are going to score you points. And then you can cycle through, get even more points on the tucks, but also see more cards. So, yeah, I think these tucking birds generally are are stronger in the grasslands in, in most scenarios. We have Geest in chat, or I don't know how to say it. I'm guessing it's Geest because Geest the Beast. But uh, he's pointed out that the uh, other card that June had for bonus mm. was Forester, which they already yeah. have two birds that qualify for it. Which Yeah, it's... It's an interesting one because Omni is probably the stronger bonus card. But yeah, if you've yes. already got two birds down, that means you just need to add a third and suddenly you get four points from that. So yeah, yeah they might not score four points at all from the Omni Works, but if they, if they didn't get the right birds, but I guess we'll yeah. have to wait and see on that. It's a situational thing. Like, if you just look at the ball cards on their own, like in yeah. a void without a starting hand, but you're starting yeah. to I probably, the difference. I probably would have leant towards the Forester there just because, you know, you, you know you're already playing those two birds. And so, yeah, that third bird is, is going to get you those four points straight away. Um, yeah. They're kind of gambling at this point that they're going to get three on the ball birds, which, yeah, doesn't look particularly likely at this, uh, this uh, moment in time. Dude, it's been one turn. <laughs> well, <laughs> but it's, I know it's early game, but, you know, no, if you I think about, okay, you. you yeah, you, you know, you probably going to play, you play on average like nine or ten birds. If they're going to play the four in their hand, that leaves six more spaces. A half of those going to be on the ball birds? You know, probably not based on the proportion of the deck, so it's, yeah. it's, it's unlikely. But um, yeah, just looking at the first couple of turns, I think it kind of has gone as expected. Um, you know, Taro didn't go for the Tauhi, and then I think absolutely June, that's a really strong position to be able to respond with the snipe. Um, yeah. There's a couple of grubs in the, in the feeder, and absolutely they're going to be able to get both of those. Um, I really can't see Intaro Doom going in the forest here. I think that's how he's going straight in the grasslands. They can lay eggs for a couple of turns, start drawing cards. And yeah, as long as they end the round with enough food for that for that Raven to go in round two, then that's a, that's a strong start for them as well. Yeah. I think the important thing to remember here with the snipe is that you're going to be making it a... I'm totally stealing points from chat here, but it's going to be come a huge risk to start activating it once that raven goes yeah. down. It, yeah. No, it's, it's a good point. for June is that the tohi in the grasslands is a pretty typical move. So you can... It's not a... Well, the thing for Nintaro actually is that it, the tohi in the grasslands isn't a huge clue that there's a raven no. in the way. No, there's, there's a little bit of a hint because they have kept the rodent, but you know, they might yeah. get that for something else. But yeah, I think in most situations, you would probably expect if your opponent had a raven, they'd go for the snipe because you, they want the card draw. So yeah, maybe somewhere in the back of their mind, you'll be thinking there might be a raven on the way, but you can't, you know, you can't plan your turns around that now. You know, you, you just got to do what's best for yourself. Yeah. And I think at this moment in time, it's getting that snipe down um, and, and trying to, you know, cycle through cards. But yeah, I think... As soon as you know that your opponent has really easy access to food, you know, they're going to be getting three food a turn from that grasslands, and maybe their access to cards isn't as good. You don't want to be giving them things that they can't access so easily. So, yeah, that snipe might see a little bit of usage in this first round, but I think it probably would be sensible from, from June to you know, try and limit the usage from that 
um, yeah. as, we, as we head into, into round two and onwards as that raven comes up. So if you're in tarot here, would you be taking the egret as an attempt to get more points out of your wetlands, or would you build the snowy egret, I would say, because there's two of them. Yeah, I mean, when you said egret, I was thinking great egret, and yeah. I, I would be picking up the great egret now, I think. Um, it's Doesn't just such a strong bird with the raven, you know, get, get, getting, getting the food for that egret is going to be so easy. It's probably not one that they'd want to play now, um, but... You know, I don't know. It's probably something that June isn't going to pick up, so maybe they have got a bit of time. But oh, that I, I, I probably still nice. like to go for it. Yeah, that would be a good bird. I wouldn't be surprised if they if they jump on that. But equally, um, you know, June has already got their snipe down, so they could yeah. afford to draw cards now if, if they wanted. But yeah, I think I think that's going to be something that Intaro Dune is absolutely going to target because it works for the end of round goal as well. And at the moment, they haven't got any of those birds down at all. Well, oh, true. Yeah, I think that I, the, with the group for June, that's allowing June to see five cards a turn and keep mm. four of them, which is incredibly yeah. strong in the first round, especially with a Absolutely. forest that's going to be getting you three food and potentially a point. So yeah. I think the Grebe would be a good for either of them right now. It's just mm. a question of whether, whether June wants to mess with their tempo. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I was thinking about. You know, they're they're thinking quite a lot about this turn, and I certainly would be. You know, it's you normally you want to lay eggs first before you're drawing cards, just so you can get rid of that egg and get more cards. I don't think they were anticipating the need to draw cards here, which is why they're maybe having second thoughts. I think what they were probably going to try and do is, you know, try and get that hawk down for this end of round, um, and and at least get a couple of eggs in there. I think they probably just about had enough turns to do that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think. I think it's it's not a terrible play here to pick up the Greeb. Um, again, it's it, it's a little bit slow on the tempo. Oh, it doesn't oh, matter because yeah. there are already ducks come up. So, yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, no, that's unfortunate. I mean, it is still a nice card, the Greeb. I think it does still work nicely for June. Um, but yeah, that that ruddy duck is is yeah. exactly the kind of bird that the entire dune has been looking for. So yeah, I, I'd be jumping all over that if I was them. And they've already got the seed to play it. So they can pick it up, play it, and lay eggs on it and that's yeah. such a strong position for the end of round goal that is that is perfect and if you pick it up and lay eggs on it immediately for two turns then that gets you the food for the raven which can go down immediately yeah yeah i think, I think that's, that's that's what yeah. they'll be that's what they'll be trying to do you know try and but really you want to get that raven down as soon as possible you know if it's the second turn in round two okay that's still fine but yeah you you really want to get it down um, as quickly as possible and just start unlocking that food and yeah the more big point birds you can get from the deck certainly something like the ruddy duck is going to help with that so yeah um, yeah I'd be I'd be all over that if I was in Tyro Doom. Yeah I think the only thing that I disagree with you on in the like play it as early as possible that makes sense but like I've personally delayed playing like, I had the kill deer in the last game that I played, and I put off playing it so that I could get a tuck and draw down earlier. So yeah. I ended up playing the kill deer around the end of round two, and I still won the yeah. game. There's situations where you can delay it by a turn or two, and certainly, you know, if a nice card comes up in the tray, yeah. I think it, it can be worth going for that instead of, um, you know, playing that raven, because you probably would have needed to draw cards at some point anyway. Um, but yeah, I'm just I'm worrying a little bit about June here. I think they did in taking that grieve. It has kind of ruined their tempo a little bit. You know, they yeah. they would have liked to have got that hawk down to lay eggs on it, but they've only got two turns left, so they can't play it now because they haven't got eggs down. Yeah. So they could lay eggs and play it, but then you've run out of turns. So um, it's unfortunate, but you know, I think I think they still have to look to get that down because um, they have got the food for it. Chickadees may be slightly nicer, but. It's just unfortunate they don't have the right food for that at the moment. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because um, June chose to take the rat for the hawk rather than mm. the stuff for the chickadee because there's the worm and the grain in the feeder. So I think they're sticking with the hawk for yeah. this end of round goal, but they might not have realized that they couldn't get the eggs on yeah. it the amount of turns they had left. I know I've done that before. Yeah, I think it's it's an important consideration to make, you know, when you are looking ahead a few turns, you know, you want to have in your head, okay, what am I going to do on this turn? You know, do I need to lay eggs and then play the bird? Or 
you know, it's important to think about turn order, especially when it comes to an end round like this. You know, being able to get those eggs in the right nest at the right time. Um, you know, I, I, I do feel like June has, has lost at least a few points here by, by missing out on that. So it's unfortunate, but um, yeah, I think I think for them they still need to you know focus on on trying to get that hawk down. Then they can get some more food and and. Yeah, I think they can still be in a strong position, adding the, the greed to their wetlands and then hopefully get some nice yeah. grassland birds to, to go alongside that, Martin. Don't be too harsh on June for having trouble getting the right eggs in the right spot at the right time. <laughs> <laughs> for anybody who watched the last stream. Yeah, let's not talk about that. <laughs> Dude, I gotta make jokes about something. <laughs> do it about setups right now, so... Okay, so we've got the Mockingbird in the tray. Um, I'm which... not certain about the Mockingbird here. I, I think it's quite nice for June. I think it's unfortunate because they probably would have liked to get that Greed down first. Um, but I think you still go for that. I think with the Martin, you know, those two birds in your grasslands, you're laying three eggs, but you're also cycling through two cards. So you're getting five points and you're just that ability to see more cards. Um, it's so strong, and yeah, they can easily get cherries from the cardinal in the forest, so I don't think they'll have any problem getting that down alongside the martin. Um, um, you know, may this, have forgotten that the round. martin existed. <laughs> Easily done. It's been sat at the bottom of their hand for the last few turns, so... Yeah. Um, oh, there's the canvas back for the omnivore. Mm, yeah, that's true. Um, it's, it's unfortunate because if they do play the canvas back, you've now got two co-op Card birds, which you really don't want to do against the raven, but you know the, the raven's still not gone down, so they they might not know it for, for now. I'd imagine it's going down next turn there, that raven. So um, yeah, that will probably influence their decision at least a little bit. I don't know how, like, I don't know what Intero's plan is in terms of the end around goal here, because I can't imagine that they'll play mm. Stellar's J, but. It wouldn't surprise me. They've got they've got really easy food access. I mean, I know it's not it's not an amazing bird, but it's still five points. Um, it's you know they're going to need a forest bird at some point for that third end of round goal anyway. So, you know, I'd probably I'd get the raven. You'd get the raven down now. Um, they can yeah. afford to draw cards for maybe a couple of turns. See what they get. You know, they might get something better. But you know, as long as they leave themselves enough turns at the end to go, okay, well, if I can still play that jay. Um, on the penultimate turn and then lay eggs on it you know any turns before then you can afford to spend those those drawing cards instead so i think they've got a little bit of time on their side to just yeah see if something better comes up and if not it's a nice backup yeah. to have it's a hard card to play for about the second round, though because it's five points for free food which is not great and it's only it's only got two egg spaces so mm. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's not, it's not great ideal in terms of no. In terms of points per food, you know, you, there are plenty of birds that are worth seven, eight, nine points for those three food. Um, but uh, to be honest, I just think that I think the entire dude is going to have so much food. Like they're going to have too much food almost this game. Like three food a turn is ridiculous. You can play literally any bird you want. So I don't yeah. think they'll need to worry too much about overpaying for something like the J um, if it is. You know, if it's going to be their only option to get down for this end of round goal, then um, absolutely, I, I think they should go for it. Yeah. I mean, really, what they need here is the. Oh, I. Why did I say this? Because I don't know how to say it. Um, the warbler, not the hooded one, the one that can go in the wetlands. Oh, the prothonotary warbler. Yes. How is that? Not I don't good? know. I don't know how to say it. <laughs> I we need Chop here like to tell us how not to say it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but... No, it's... yeah. Eight it's, points it's... and four egg spaces is perfect. Yeah. I know. Yeah, that would be, be a good option. Um, I think I think really they need double birds, so uh, really? I still think that that great egret would have been a nice pickup in the, in the first round. I think they could have afforded to do that. Um, the Ibis isn't bad, you know, again. The Ibis points. is tasty. Whooping Crane is perfect, so that's a nice pull. Um, I think they're still hoping for like you say, some of those warblers or just other strong forest birds that have a lot of egg spaces or are worth a lot of points. Um, I think at this point they might be able to afford one more turn of drawing cards um, and, and see what they get, but yeah, sooner rather than later they're, they're going to need to at least make a decision and, and think about what forest bird they're going to get down. Yeah. 
Would you drop the white start as a cheap bird for egg spaces, or would you go with Seller's J? I still go Seller's J. You know, it's, it's four points difference, um, yeah. and only one more egg space. I think, you know, particularly if you look at June's board, uh, if you're in Tarot you're thinking, okay, well. They've got nothing in the grasslands and they've only got two spaces in the wetlands. Now, how likely in four turns are they going to be able to get more than that number of egg spaces and then actually lay eggs on them as well? Um, I certainly think that, you know, if Intaro Dune can get this J down, even if it's only got two spots, that's at least going to be a tie. And I think you take that. Um, yeah. And certainly, you know, that third end around Galba had a bit more time to, to go through the deck and maybe pick up more birds. So. Um, yeah. yeah, I think you, you, you prioritise the points from the J rather than the X spaces on the white star. It's a good way to think about it. Mm. It's an interesting turn order here for, for June playing the Mockingbird um, before the Martin. It's you know you, um, don't, you don't often see Mockingbird yeah. being the only bird in a habitat, so that yeah, really I, strongly I, signals to your opponent that you're going to add something to that on the next turn. Well, you saw Taro staring at their board, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I kind I think... of like I kind of like Mockingbird as the first bird in the Grasslands habitat. If you're planning on running a Grassland engine, which is sort of a risky bet here because June mm. doesn't have any other cards to bet on. But if you've got it at the end, you can go through your tuck and draws and then decide if you want to be tucking any. Yeah, that's true. Be like a hawk or a lay an egg with any. Yeah, I guess it does depend a little bit on what they can, you know, potentially add um, yeah. to this. Because, like you say, you could you could copy an earlier power as your as your final move. So, yeah, maybe they get a you know a food bird or something like that that might come in handy. But um, yeah, I think at this point it's it's not a bad point scoring grasslands. And certainly, you know, if you compare it to the number of points that uh, Intaro Dunes getting from their grasslands, it's much more. So. Yeah. Um, I think I think it's it's going to all be about what cards they can pull for, for June because the forest is is actually not bad. You know they've got quite good access to food, so if they are able to cycle through the deck, um, get some nice birds to add in and get some points, then you know they're they're not out of this by any means at this point of the game. No. Would you still be playing the Grebe if you're June, or do you think it's too late at this point? <sighs> it's a tricky one. Um, because you don't want to be relying on that snipe because you're giving no. cards to the raven. But also it's a zero no. point bird. So Yeah, and and you know, if you are gonna add a wetland bird, that canvas back with the omnivore is six points. So you know, sure. that's that's a big difference and you think, okay, how much how much do you value getting a couple more cards versus getting six more points? Um, I think in a game like this where you see your opponent has the raven, you know, you need to get every point you can possible. You know, I don't think I don't think you'd want to leave that canvas back off the board for sure. Um, so yeah, I think I think that greed probably is going to get tucked. It does feel a little bit too late at this point. You know, they're not going to play it this round. I, I think they're going to need to focus on getting these eggs down for the end of round. So you know, third round for the greed. That's that's almost certainly too late. Yeah. Agreed. 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 <laughs> And yeah, it does go, so uh, not entirely surprising there, but yeah. Oh, that's quite a nice pull. Um, would you look to play the spoon bill over the canvas back as your as your second wetland bird? Um, not as a second though. I definitely look at getting the spoon bill down, but at some point. At some point, yeah. I don't mm. think it's the priority right here. What's the last yeah, I... end of round goal? Can you tell? Uh, I cannot because it's covered by the uh, <laughs> by the yeah. symbol. So anybody in uh, chat want to tell us? We we can when it gets to the end of rounds, we'll we'll have to pay more attention because we'll get to see it then. But um, yeah, yeah. I mean, the only reason I ask about the spoon bill is you know if you are playing that canvas back, do you expect to use that power alongside the snipe and give your opponent two cards in that one turn? You know, if you're going to be skipping the canvas back power anyway, um, you know what? Why why play it and not something like the spoon bill that's going to get you a bonus card as well? Okay, see, now you make good points. <laughs> no, I mean, I don't think there's any right or wrong answer here. I think it's it's going to be yeah, down to Junior. They'll need to decide. Oh, there you go. It's ground nests. Okay, so canvas back might be useful for that, obviously, with the star nest. Um, yes. They've already got the sniper with one, so uh, they'll, they'll almost certainly need more than that if they're going to target it. But um, I think yeah, also I suppose... 
the campus back versus spoon bill debate is <sighs> well see i don't know because they might have to make a decision us. now oh. <laughs> having drawn the warbler um they yeah. would, i would be looking to keep that as a seven point bird so yeah, which uh, which card you keep and which to get rid of. This is kind of the danger of running a heavy tuck engine like this. You know, if you don't have enough cards in your hand, yeah. and you suddenly get to the point where you don't want to tuck something, uh, you you kind of have to commit. So um, it's unfortunate. You know, you, you always have the option of skipping the tuck, but it feels like a waste. You know, you're you're missing out on that point. So my bet's on uh, Kansas it's... back. That's my bet. I yeah, I I think yeah. that's what I would tuck. That's what I'd be getting rid of here. Um, certainly oh. I don't think they'd be looking to use okay. power but okay. there you go <laughs> okay cool I think uh, if they've kept the canvas back that's a really strong signal that they're going to look to play it so um, yeah yeah, we might see well, that hopefully. down pretty early in, in round 3 maybe they're like Yorn and they just like having mm. a bird in their hand is a good luck charm <laughs> quite possibly <laughs> so just uh Hovering back over to Intaro Dunes board, they did play the white start in the end. Um, I think oh. they probably worked out they just had enough turns to get those three eggs on there. So that's nice. That's helped them win the end of round goal. So yeah. certainly that's worth another three points. And yeah, I think potentially, you know, with that last end of round goal being the ground nests, suddenly they've got three versus just the single uh, one on the snipe for, for June. So they put themselves in a really strong position. And I think any time in a, in a two player game like this where you can target and you know, strongly win those end of round goals. It's such a yeah. strong position to be in. So, um, yeah, I, I I think that's that wasn't you know a bad move in the end against the White Star. I like the cuckoo deny from Intaro. Well, I I guess it's partly a deny, but they're both looking at running vengeance right now. So yeah, cuckoo. I think they could they could easily play it. You know, they well they don't have to get, get more. This. Uh, oh, that's a very good point. Um, they've got the yeah, and they've not really... that's their only end step. Yeah, and the J. I mean, they could get both of those down. You know, they've got they got yeah. the food for it. It's not bad. It's it's two five point birds. It's more egg spaces in the forest, which you know they might need to look at getting for this third end of round goal. So I don't mind it's it. Good. And yeah, I mean, when you look at the the setup that June's got in their grasslands, you know they're going to want to run that as much as possible. They've got plenty of egg space, so. Yeah, if you can if you can at least get a free egg every time your opponent's activating that, then it does yeah. help you know, limit the damage at least a little bit. I like the phrase limit the damage. Yeah, well, I th you know, you can think about it as okay, they my opponent yeah. got five point engine, but if I'm getting a point every time they're doing that, it effectively becomes a four point engine. So every yeah. time you add on a pink bird, you, you just weaken the position that your opponent's in. So. Uh, but yeah, we do see the canvas back go down. So I think as soon as they had realised, um, you know, okay, I'm going to need to tuck this warbler, that was kind of the signal that that canvas back's going down. So I will be interested to see if they activate it. I think I probably would lean towards activating it at this point, just because you look at the position your opponents in with their wetlands. You know, they, they've got a decent enough card draw. So. We've got the whooping uh, crane down for Antero, and they've pulled we do. leader and culture. Yeah, I Which think... Which is not a great pull. No, it's a shame because, on, you know, ordinarily that Viticulturalist is such a strong bonus card, but I think they just looked at the position they're in, you know, they've only got one down, and all the birds in their hand, none of them meet it, meet it either. You know, they'd still have to, even adding one more bird to that is only going to get that lower threshold, whereas I think they can be pretty sure that they're going to finish at least with enough cards to get that lower visionary leader threshold and you know they might even they might even have enough particularly if june's going to activate those co-op bird uh, powers in the wetlands then yeah I, I i think they could potentially look to max that one out as well if i were june i would have gone to the wetlands before laying eggs because mm. i feel like you're really like yeah there's just too many birds that it's a like, strange Cassins one. is something that you'd want to keep, and now having to chuck that. Yeah, well, they got burned already um, with the last yeah. round, not wanting to tuck the to, the warbler. So it is interesting that you play the canvas back and then not use it. You know, you'd still go back to your grasslands before powering it anyway. Um, but yeah, it'd be interesting to see. They've gone for the flycatcher, which I don't know. It feels a little bit late. Um, you know, they have got the food for it, but I guess we'll, we'll wait and see. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, we had some interesting points in the chat that actually have already come true. I was just about to mention that, um, you know, I've had some people talk about the oyster catcher maybe going down. Um, <laughs> if it's given oh, them the no. kill deer, then <laughs> that's, that's potentially a, a, an oh. even better position. But yeah, oh, I mean, yeah. I think the oyster catcher made sense anyway. You know, it helps with that visionary leader just giving enough cards. But also, they've got the wetland scientist, which is going to meet. And it's another ground nest bird for that last end of round goal. So, yeah, I think that's that's a good uh, a good pull. And you know, do you add a kill at this point? Is it too late? It's uh, it's a certainly a dilemma. And yeah, I think the kill deer, if they do play it, that visionary leader bonus is is basically a guaranteed seven points. Yeah, I def definitely with the wetland scientist, which requires five birds to max it out, and the um, the visionary leader. I think kill deer is a strong play here. Even though um, Antaro doesn't have uh, the tuck and draw birds to really gain points directly from it, but yeah, I guess you're only gaining you're only gaining one egg if you drop the kill deer and use it every time. So that, I think that's I what concerns me. I myself out of it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's, no, it's a difficult one. Yeah, he's got he's got the ibis in his hand, which is. Well, it, he, that's he definitely going down. Hand, which is maxes out the yeah. wetland scientist. It's eight points, so there's no point in digging for a high point wetland bird when you have one. Yeah, I it think just, it, it. It to me, it does feel a little bit too late. And you, you know, you, I think you made the good points there. Of, you know, if, if you get that kill deer down, suddenly you're only actually gaining one egg a turn. So you're kind of gambling on being able to draw those big point birds and just play those for points instead. But yeah, I I almost I almost would look at maybe getting either the meadow luck or that um, that grasshopper sparrow down. I think they they need to at least you know be scoring some points um, from that engine. But yeah, really at this point you think okay, I've got the ibis, I'm going to play that. What am I going to do for the for the rest of this game? You know, what other birds am I going to let's play? If they are going to have to go back to the wetlands at least once anyway. Um, you know, maybe it suddenly becomes worth playing the kill deer, but it's it's certainly a tricky one. So, yeah, it doesn't surprise me that they're that they're mulling it over a bit here. We had a suggestion in the chat that was play both the kill deer and the metal lark, which is the lay two on ground nests, and your opponent mm. lays one. Which I think could, it could be very good for Intaro because they have so many ground nests. Yeah, but I think I think if they, them. yeah, if they had the food to get it down on that last turn and this one, then it could yes. maybe have been worth going for it. But they didn't have the seed, so it would have taken at least one more turn laying eggs. And then by the time you've got them both down and you're able to activate them, you're Probably already like going into that last round. So you know it then gets to that point where you think, okay, I still want to play this bird and this other bird and maybe this other bird. Okay, well, how many turns does that actually leave me laying eggs? You know, maybe only twice. And if you're only activating that medal like twice, it's, it's probably not worth it from a point perspective. Or June is rolled, um, or once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think they were hoping for more rodents or more fish. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they they have a, a, a reasonably nice uh, forest at this point, you know, getting getting those yeah. four foods. So, They've um, got enough certainly, to get yeah, they, right now. Yeah. Yeah, I would imagine they would... Yeah, they're going to need to draw cards once more at least, I think. Unless you're going to go spoon bill and then just cycle that hawk until he gets something good. But that always feels like a bit of a risk. So yeah, um, it wouldn't surprise me if they get the spoon bill down and then go for cards and then yeah, whatever they get. If it's something good, play it. Otherwise, you know, you can you can cycle through a bit more. I think the well, kingfisher would have been good like four turns ago. Mm. Before yeah, it's too late now. Yeah, it's, it's too late now because your opponents filled up the wetlands. But exactly. as the omnivore expert bird and the star nest mm. and potentially a power. Yeah. Okay, so that's the food web expert, which is a guaranteed four points, or wallagist, which is at least three yeah. points. Yeah, I think, you go, I think you go. I think you go. I think you go wallagist here because but you, you know you're going to get that. Wallagist. Well, because you know you're going to get that nice bird down, and they've got no, you really don't. easy <laughs> access to eggs. Well, I. I'd be very surprised if they don't play a nice bird here. You know, sure. I, I guess they could the in theory. Yeah, I mean they have got the space to lay eggs just for the rest of the game and get five points a turn. But 
I think at this point you look at your position and certainly if that guild is going to come down, you think, well, I've got to go for broke here. You know, I can't take the safe play and go five points a turn. It's just not gonna. It's not gonna win me this game. You know, I need to take a risk and see what I can get. But yeah, they have gone for the kills here. Um, and just based on the food they took on their on their previous turn, I wouldn't be surprised if they add the pivot here as well, just to at least get that fourth egg. Um, and obviously, it's gonna be another ground nest um, and uh, and a bonus card. So yeah, it'd be interesting to see if they go pivot or meadow luck. Obviously, either of them could go down, but. Um, I'd probably lean towards towards the pivot if, if I was in Intaro Doom's position right yeah. now. Just when you have so many of one nest type, you can always hope. Exactly. So we've okay. got the draw from June here. Yes. This is an attempt to run their grasslands for the rest of the game. Yeah, I think I think they will look to play a bird having having gone for cards. You know, the the night heron's not a bad one. I think they're probably looking for an omnivore bird. Yeah, as we mentioned, the kingfisher, it's not great in this position. Um, but yeah, I think really they just they need something that's going to get points um, and just be that um, you know that that nice bird. Really, you want something in the grasslands at least, so you have the option of discarding food. But um, yeah, kestrel kestrel is not great, so um, yeah. I think I wouldn't be surprised if they at least spend a turn or two. Um, you know, cycling cards and, and just see what comes up because you know, it's still a strong yeah. position with the with the Martin and the and the Mockingbird. They can at least you know cycle through some yeah. of those cards and yeah, hope something better comes up. So, would you look to get the Night Heron down if you've got a five point Grassland? I guess they have. They don't have the egg spaces to just run it. Mm. The well, yes, they do. Because uh, yeah, fifteen they have egg the space. Plus, So yeah. that's five points yeah. a turn. Yeah, they could easily go five lots of five here, um, but then you've got to bear in mind, okay, well, if I'm missing out three points on the Urologist, you know, if I if I draw food, I oh, play that Night Heron, okay, the Night Heron's only seven points after the eggs, but it's going to get me three more points for the Urologist, so you're at least getting that ten, um, you know, and, and if you get a successful hunt from the Hawk, then you're coming up ahead, so... Yeah, yeah. I I think there are potentially better options um, than the Night Heron, but it still isn't bad. You know, it's a lot of points. So yeah, no, those point bomb birds are good. I just mm. I completely forgot about Uala just after complaining about it. Yeah. So... <laughs> yeah. I I'm just looking back onto the entire Doom board and thinking that the kill deer now just feels like a really odd play. Um, because you know they they have got some nice birds. I mean, yeah, maybe they are trying to at least max out that um, visionary leader. Yeah. But the number of eggs they're going to have to spend from the kill deer isn't going to make it worth it. You know, if you have to spend three eggs to get enough cards to max that out, well, that's three points that you've gained from the visionary leader anyway. So I don't think you've really put yourself in, in much stronger position there. But yeah, it'd be interesting to see how they how they do play this one here. I think I, I, think I like the Metal Arc play here. Hmm. Like that that feels like the best option for me in terms of kill the year. Because then yeah, you're getting, I don't know. You're getting six it, eggs a turn, minus two, so that's four eggs. So you're you're breaking even. And yeah, even though you're I throwing just, eggs for this end of yeah. roll. I think For me, like, it doesn't it doesn't work with the kill deer because if you've played kill deer, I don't know, you're surely gonna hope that you're gonna draw more birds to play. And I think if you're if you're drawing more birds to play, that's less turns laying eggs, and so that's less turns using the metal arc. I think if you were going to do that, you're in a better position playing the pipit and at least hoping you get a nice bonus card. But they yeah. did manage to draw one of those tuck and lay. Uh, is it too late? Maybe, yeah. but I don't know. It, again, it, it depends entirely what they want to do. You know, they haven't got a whole lot of big point birds to get down from their hand, so you know maybe yeah. you do get the swift down and, and just run that grasslands and, and try and max out the points, but. It does, to me, feel feel a little bit too late for that kind of bird. That agrees. Yeah, I think if that had come up on the same turn as the kill deer, and they could have got those two down straight away, then it would have been yeah. nice. But well, you yeah, would have said it was too late then, too. Well, I think it was too late because they played the ibis, so they'd already delayed it a couple of turns. And yeah, you know, how many turns really are they going to be using that? Um, have to wait and yeah. see. But looks like June is is oh. committing with the hawk, which. I I don't mind actually. 
Yeah. Um, you know, it's less points than the harem, but you spend less eggs, and you know they set themselves up nicely because they've realised, okay, I've got three spare food here. Each of those food is a point, um, yeah. and I'm you know giving myself chances with successful hunts from the hawk, so they can easily run that grasslands. They'll max out the oologist, um, and yeah, just get as many eggs down and get lots of tucks and and hopefully get some some success from that hawk as well. So it's not a bad position. Yeah. And certainly, running that grasslands is going to score them more points um, than what Intara Dune is scoring here. So maybe they can they can pull this back. Uh, you know, particularly with a, a weak bonus card draw like that for Intara Dune, that's that's not mm. really what you want to see at the end of the game. Well, two points is better than none. Two points is better than none, but uh, yeah, Yikes. only yeah from a from a rodentologist perspective you'd you'd expect more than two points i think in most games so it's unfortunate yeah. but yeah that, that's that's the gamble that you take when you play something like the pippet late in the game you know you, you can never be too sure what's going to come up i'm still a kill your metal lark fan but that's just me <sighs> yeah i don't know it just it feels it feels odd for sure um i i'm much prefer what June has done in this end game. I think they've planned out their turns much better, just in terms of, you know, they knew they had to go for Carter once more, and then they saw what they got and thought, okay, I can make this hawk work, so I'll go for food. I think they did get success from from the the forest hawk they've got down. And yeah, you know, they, they, they're able to get six or seven points a turn from their grasslands at the end, and that's such a strong position to be in. And you compare that to what Intara Dune's having to do here, you know, they, they're already skipping the kill here, so, you know, four points from your grasslands, is that the best you can do? It just, it feels a little bit weak at this point of the game. Um, yeah. And yeah, certainly not the kind of big point scoring you expect from round four. Or you might get to be able to do... I'm just going to make words up, apparently. <laughs> might You can do a video on how to beat Raven and kill deer. The answer is your Raven miss... Your, Opponent mismanages the Raven and Kill Deer. Mm. I did not get enough sleep last night. Sorry, <laughs> evidently not. No, I think I don't know. I I still feel like the Kill Deer was 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 the wrong play. I mean, maybe if they only had to spend one egg and it helped them get that visionary leader, maybe you can justify it. But I yeah. think they could have got more points. You know, if you played that Grasshopper Sparrow, that's getting you an egg every turn instead of costing you an egg from the Kill Deer. So it's basically two points better. Um, you could have gone with the, um, the grasshopper sparrow and the metal lark, mm. yeah, and that would have just exactly. like full on I, spammed your. Um, yeah, your I think it kind of for me it felt like a little bit of indecision. You know, I think if they'd committed and they said, okay, I'm gonna play the metal lark and the sparrow and just expand and just try and fill yeah. up as many of these spots, then I think I would have been comfortable with that. But I think they played the kill deer just in the hope that something better might come up, and then it didn't. So. They're kind of stuck with what they've got, and yeah, they're having to run this kind of mediocre grasslands at the end here, not really getting lots of points. And you know, you look over at your opponent's board, and they're getting six or seven points, and it's yeah, it's it's a big difference at this stage of the game. So yeah, yeah. I I don't know if it's going to be enough for June to pull it back. Obviously, we've seen um, I think the end of round goals will end up being split fifty fifty here. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just I. I feel like June's board looks much yes. stronger. Just it in looks terms more of the cohesive, I think. The co yeah, that's that's the word. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah, it, yeah. it makes knowing, more sense. Yeah. Knowing what, how late the Killdeer and the Raven exactly. were down. Like, yeah. if you had had the, like, if Intero had gotten that Killdeer down like early round two, perfect. But mm. I don't know what you were going on about about. Splitting those goals 50. No, neither am I because Antara Dudes won three of them, so ignore me. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, it's, I don't know. I it, think maybe those bonus points. card points, those bonus card points are going to be enough potentially, Ooh. but I think, you know, June's going to have a lot of tough cards coming in at the end here, so oh, that uh, it will be interesting to see if it's enough. <laughs> yeah, it's difficult to see because it is all lagging a bit here, but. And there you oh, go, no! June has taken it. And Look at that! That absolutely does not surprise me in the light, in the in the slightest, just because that end game. That felt absolutely so... does not surprise me in the slightest. Two minutes earlier, I don't know if this is enough for June to pull it back. Well, <laughs> I think I think just in that last round, just look at the point scoring that June was getting yes. from those last few turns. It just felt, you know, it, it really felt like missed opportunity for Intaro Dune there. Yeah, just all those tuck cards that June managed to get. 
yeah. um, was was able to pull it back for them. So yeah, really, really strong performance I think for June there. Um, yeah. They look kind of dead and buried in those first couple of rounds, um, but, but, but brought, yeah. brought it back really strongly. So 